The final pattern is really a pattern that we've touched on with a lot of the other examples we've done, but I want to get very specific about yes, no questions. You'll see a lot of questions on data sufficiency that are asked in such a way that the answer to the question itself will be either yes or no. And here's the important point. Even if a statement leads you to conclude that the answer to the question is no, the very fact that you can answer no means that you have been given enough information to answer the question. I mean, it makes sense, right? The very fact that you can answer no means you've been given enough information and that means that the statement that allowed you to conclude that is sufficient. Let's take a look at an example and really hammer home this point. Here's a simple straightforward question. Is x greater than zero? Yes or no? Is x greater than zero? Well, statement number one says that x cubed is less than zero. So again, we chase it down the rabbit hole a little bit. We make our lists. What are some possible values of x? And it's testing your knowledge about exponents and some rules that we'll cover during the exponent lesson in future videos. But nevertheless, what are some possible values of x? To where when you cube it, the outcome will be less than zero. Well, certainly not something positive, right? I mean, two cubed is positive, three cubed is positive, one half cubed is positive. Anything positive times itself will continue to be positive. Does that make sense? So it's got to be a negative number. X could be negative one, for example, because what's negative one cubed? Well, negative one squared, negative one times negative one is positive one, but then you multiply it by negative one again, it turns negative negative one would work, negative two would work, negative three would work, negative one half would work. The point is that's simply a statement telling us a rule of exponents that you will learn later, but I'm bringing it up here now, which is to say that if you square a negative number, it's positive, but if you cube a negative number, it's negative, and the only way x cubed could be less than zero is if x itself is negative. Now, what is x? Remember, we talked about that before. We don't actually care what x is. And in this case, we're not able to definitively know what x is, but we know something about the nature of x. And specifically, we know that x is negative. In all cases, it will be negative. Which brings us to the question, is x greater than zero? According to statement one, no. But you know what? The very fact that we were able to answer no means that statement number one is sufficient. And it may sound like I'm beating a dead horse, and, and I apologize if you're feeling like, you know what, geez, come on, get to the point. You've, you've gone over this and over this and over this. But I can't tell you how many times, and you may be sitting there still trying to get your mind around this, where when you realize the answer is no, students just will, just for some reason, just think that means the statement is not sufficient. No, no, no. The, the word no means no, 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 and so they think it's not sufficient. That's not the case. The very fact, again, that you can answer the question, even if the answer happens to be no, means you've been given enough information. Statement one is sufficient. So we cross off answer choices B, C, and E. I'll make it even more concrete for you. Remember what we said? You do the brain work. What would enable us to answer this question? Well, obviously, if we knew something about the nature of x definitively, but what if we knew exactly what x was? What if statement two tells us that 3x equals negative 3? Is that sufficient or not? Well, again, if you did the brain work beforehand and you said, okay, what information? Well, obviously, if they give me x, I mean, if they just tell me what x is, that would be sufficient to answer the question. That's essentially what they've done here, haven't they? I mean, I said we don't actually need to solve for x, but the bottom line is we all know, just looking at that, that we could solve for x definitively. And if you go too far and actually do it, I encourage you not to. I encourage you just to realize, hey, one equation, one variable, I could solve for x, and once I know x, I could answer the question. I don't care whether the answer is yes, I don't care whether the answer is no, the point is I can answer the question, so I don't get confused. But nevertheless, let's say you do and you realize x is negative 1 and you look up here, is x greater than 0? No, x is negative 1. Again, answer to the question, no. But the very fact that you were able to answer no means you were given enough information, both statements, individually. So either statement is sufficient to answer the question, even though the answer to the question happens to be no. 
to the extent that you can avoid actually answering the question will help you avoid a lot of confusion. You see a statement like that, actually sometimes finding out the answer can be more confusing than anything. Just realize you've been given enough information to find X, therefore you can answer the question. But nevertheless, I just wanted to be very clear. I wanted to be very specific and understand that if you can definitively answer the question one way or the other, the statement is sufficient.